Some of you have asked me what apps I use on my iPad Pro in order to stay productive whether I'm on the go or at home. Well, for all of my student needs, and professional, and even some minor gaming needs, here is pretty much everything I have and use on my iPad Pro in 2020. So, let's dive in. And alright, so let's go ahead and explore what's currently on my iPad Pro. So, I suppose that for now, we can go ahead and start off with every, everything that's up here. And for the most part, you're just going to find the pretty basic Apple apps like you have FaceTime, the calendar, clock, home, photos, you've got camera, reminders, um, you've also got contacts, you've got maps, you got Find My iPad in this case, you got the App Store, which I have been using a lot more frequently. And you can tell by just how many apps I've been downloading across the board. Uh, by the way, this is the 256 gig version and um, it's also the cellular model and uh, this iPad can obviously support all of these apps and pretty much anything I would need to do off of them. Though I kind of prefer to keep things on a separate medium, but anyway. You have news and then um, other things. I decided to keep my productivity uh, based software right here. Actually, right at the front. So we got LumaFusion. This is the application I use obviously to edit my videos on the go. I don't always edit on the iPad, but usually when I do, um, it's because I'm on the go and, uh, editing on my, and, uh, editing on my laptop while my laptop is more powerful and it supports more powerful software. Uh, it, it just tends to lag behind quite a bit when it comes to timeline performance in particular. So I'm just very efficient on the iPad when it comes to just editing here and, and things like that. This is one of the reviews I was preparing before. I haven't edited anything on the iPad in some time. I've kind of moved almost entirely to DaVinci Resolve ever since we got quarantined. So for the most part, yeah, the iPad hasn't been editing too many of my videos, but when I've had to, performance and the timeline and just editing has been absolutely wonderful. LumaFusion is really amazing for that. The only thing that it's missing is really a video stabilizer. Um, however, as a solution to that, I downloaded it, this application called Emujo. Uh, which is used for actually just that. So, so then you would take a piece of footage, throw it in there, and then uh, you would be able to, to, to stabilize it to where it's content over here, just add the free version. And it's not that effective as is, but if you get the paid version, uh, you can get more out of it for sure. I think you've got Affinity Photo. This is the program that I use to edit my thumbnails, usually, especially when I just started editing off of the iPad. This is, for example, a thumbnail that I had prepared uh, for the iPad Pro beforehand. I've been using this instead of the, the Photoshop app because I'm trying to distance myself a little bit from the Adobe Suite, though not really entirely. You can't really escape it as a creative professional. You have a dark room, which, uh, which is supposed to be the, subst the substitute to Lightroom, uh, but I haven't fiddled around with it too much. Uh, though I do hear that it is pretty good, but I don't even use Lightroom all that often, really. So not much to show there. Then there's Procreate. This program I use very often, actually. And that's because uh, as an animation major in school, um, I don't really work on too many stills or anything like that. At least I don't anymore since I've had to focus a lot more in animation. I kind of, uh, I've been using the iPad to help me prepare for uh, some of the other animated sequences for my thesis. So I do some of my animations here. So if I go ahead and let this play out, for example, you'll see that it's just a pretty simple fight scene at the very least, just one part of it. Uh, these things take a long time to make, by the way. And then this is another portion I was working on that I ended up finishing uh, on my desktop, actually, for uh, still the same fight, but just a different uh, instance of it. So yeah, but for stills, I mean, I, I, I tried this um, really bad sketch of Noctis. For the most part, again, I've really just been focusing on animation, but this program is incredibly powerful. And um, it is what, what, honestly, what Sketchbook on iPad should have been because I use Sketchbook Pro all the time on desktop and I love it even for animation, but you can't animate using uh, um, Sketchbook on the iPad Pro, unfortunately, so I had to look for other avenues. Procreate has gotten the job done just fine. Then we have uh, Dotable, 
which is actually the program that I use sometimes to make some pixel art. Uh, recently, I, I decided to make something a little bit dumb. Uh, it's not really here anymore, unfortunately. I did end up deleting it. You can create your canvas and stuff. You can even make animations, but this is really just for pixel art. I love making pixel art, but I, I haven't had enough time really to work on that all too much. And on this side, I just have the Apple apps that I, I seldom use at all. Um, so I kind of just keep them over here in this folder so that they don't bother me. Now over here, I have a Adobe Premiere Rush, which is uh, the program that I used to use to, to edit my, whoops, that I used to use to, uh, um, to edit my videos on the iPad. But this program is so unbelievably limited that I pretty much just had to drop it. I decided to just go ahead and uh, get LumaFusion, just pay for that out of pocket because uh, the 30 bucks of uh, actually being productive is worth it in comparison to uh, getting this program for free from my school, but then being severely neutered and not really being able to get as productive. It performs really well, but it doesn't let you load anything off of the files app or even off of an external drive. So to that application, honestly, I, I I'm not going back to Rush unless I absolutely have to. Then you have a Photoshop for iPad, which is um, a lot better than the initial mobile version for sure. Here you, you could definitely get um, a lot more done than what you used to for sure. You have a lot more tools, but this is still maybe 20% at best of what actual Photoshop can offer and it's still very neutered. More features are coming over time, but it, it, it it's really not where it needs to be, which is why I'm using uh, Affinity Photo already because it feels much more, uh, it feels more full-fledged than Photoshop on iPad or the full version like they call it. You also have Lightroom over here, which I don't use all that often, but I do still keep it around. Adobe Draw, I use other drawing software, but I kind of kept it there because I am interested in learning it eventually. And you have, uh, whoops, sorry. You have Netflix on this side for obvious reasons. I need my entertainment every now and then. You have Amazon. I shop a lot from Amazon. That's where I get a lot of my review units, actually, whenever I buy anything. Uh, Spark Post, I haven't really used all that much, or Spark Page. Uh, so these two programs actually have to do with website design, if I'm not mistaken, but they're going to come in handy later on when I'm working on a website. You have Adobe Fresco, which is also for drawing, but I haven't had too much time for that as of late, so I kind of just left that the way that it is. Uh, you have Hulu over here. Haven't used Hulu in a while. HBO Now, I pretty much only got for Game of Thrones. Uh, haven't used it in, in a long time either. Prime videos, I'm a Prime member, so I figured I might as well download it, even though I don't really watch much off of it. So then over here, you actually have Steam Link. Uh, on the iPad, you can actually stream from your stream library uh, on your PC all the way to your iPad, and you can game on it just fine. And I mean, depending on your internet connection, just how close you are to it, uh, it does actually perform really well. So I do like having that for playing those desktop games on the iPad. But again, they have to be streamed, so I don't use it all that often. Uh, Discord, obviously, it's an app that kind of has to be there. The Creative Cloud, I keep that there just for, for safekeeping, managing my cloud storage in regards to the Adobe apps and stuff. Uh, Duolingo is um, a program for learning different languages. Before I was trying to learn a little bit more Norwegian. However, um, I've been indulging myself a little bit more with Italian since I'm already a Spanish speaker, but Italian is uh, pretty close to that. So I think it would be much easier for me to learn Italian before I can even get to Norwegian, which are two completely different languages. You also have uh, um, Airbnb, but this app won't get any usage until quarantine is over. Hopefully I get to visit other places soon. Uh, you have my banking app. You have over here um, Sketchbook Motion, which is uh, more so for motion tweeting, really. It is an animated version of Sketchbook, but um, it's not really frame by frame animation, so I seldom use it. Sketchbook, I use it mostly for those still drawings. Though, again, I haven't done too many of those in a while. Uh, uh, Shaper 3D, this is again just a 3D modeling software. Uh, it, it's not really that amazing, I don't love it all that much. This folder is actually just for work, and this is the games folder. This is actually just for the games I was testing back when I did my uh, uh, gaming on the iPad Pro kind of experience video. Here I have other Adobe apps that I do plan on testing out at some point, but I kind of just tossed them aside 
in there. Um, um, host party is for work since I've been working from home. Uh, and LED cord actually just has to do uh, with uh, uh, um, with my Zami Smart light panels. This is the app that I use to control them, and that has been very useful. This side, you just have actually just a couple of Google apps. You have the Assistant, Google Drive, AdSense, obviously, um, Outlook, Google Docs. You have eBay. I shop on eBay a lot too. QuadPay is my best friend. Um, this is what I use to help uh, make buying some review units easier because it splits your payments in four, which is really cool. No credit card required. You have uh, this game over here, which is the City of Final Fantasy, but this is more so for mobile. And you have uh, Verizon, since again, this is uh, a, a cellular tablet. And then over here on my dock, I actually have just, well, my messaging app, Google Chrome app, I have the Files app. I have to keep that readily available. Gmail I use all the time. As you can see, that app is actually being filled up free uh, pretty well right now. I have Spotify. I listen to a ton of music here on Spotify. Um, as many of you already know, I actually uh, we love listening to metal and orchestral stuff usually, but uh, I've been delving into other genres overall, so there's that. Just a YouTube notification. You have uh, the Pages app, which I use mostly just, just for note-taking in school and that sort of thing if I really want to use the Apple Pencil, but I just prefer typing overall than writing. I feel faster that way. A keep note, this application is the one that I frequent the most probably out of everything. From all of these notes, this is what I use to actually write all of my uh, um, Tech Summit scripts for the reviews, my plans for future videos, my schedule uh, uh, for the week and that sort of thing. Everything is just going to be right here, pretty much. And it's all uh, actually a lot more organized than it might appear at first. I can use this app on desktop, I can use it on my phone, I can use it on the iPad. It's just the easiest way of uh, keeping all of my files in just one place. The Keeps Note is literally one of the best things that has ever existed, ever in all of existence. So there's that. Uh, then you have over here the, uh, the YouTube Studio. Um, for some reason it started off in Portrait, but uh, it, it can go into landscape usually. But yeah, these are just for my metrics so I can mon monitor everything in regards to YouTube. Let's go back over here. And then this is going to be a uh, YouTube app. Obviously, this is what I use to watch all of my YouTube videos. Um, a lot of tech stuff, but as you can see, also more things related to uh, um, anime and the things I'm a little bit more excited for, like the Final Fantasy VII Remake are popping up over there. You got the Twitch app, sometimes I use this just to monitor the chat while I'm streaming. And if you are, and if you are, and if you are interested in watching a couple of my streams, then I, I will be making sure to leave uh, links to my Twitch channel down in the description. You also have Twitter, obviously, for tweeting things and being able to keep up to date with everything. Instagram, still, again, mostly tech summit related. You have the settings app. And over here, these are just the most recently used apps. But yeah, essentially, this has been the episode of what's on my iPad Pro. This is everything that I carry here. Most of it is going to be productivity based. A lot of this is for the purposes of Tech Summit of running the channel on the go. Um, but I use this very heavily as a student too. The animation portion is for the student part because I'm an animation major in college, but LumaFusion, Affinity Photo, that stuff is really just for YouTube and maintaining Tech Summit overall. And so that's pretty much it. And that's everything I use on, on my iPad Pro if I want to say productive in some way, whether I'm studying, working on some animations, or making these YouTube videos, but this is particularly when I'm on the go. So if anything here inspired you to try something out, then do make sure to let me know down in the comments if anything here worked for you. So that's pretty much been the end there. And if you're interested in purchasing the iPad Pro or any of the accessories that I've featured here, or even perhaps any other content that I've made surrounding the iPad Pro, then I will be making sure to leave any purchase links, uh, which will be affiliated, and any reviews of, of all of those other pieces of content down in the description. And if you end up using any of my links to make a purchase, then I do get a small commission that does help me run things just a little bit more smoothly around here. So if you were to use those, I would appreciate that quite a bit. 
And also, if you like me enough, then do make sure to follow me on Twitch, where I like to stream a couple of RPGs every now and then, and I usually do the do these every Friday and Saturday and between 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. Eastern Time. If that is something that interests you, and we and if you would like to stop by, then by all means to check out the links down in the description. I'd like to just chill out over there and I hope to see you over there as well. Be sure to also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter if you would like to stay up to date with the latest Tech Summit endeavors. So with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.